Hi, I'm Stephen Keller, and in this video, I'll introduce you to semantic interpretation. If you haven't already watched our videos on working with SRGS grammars and you don't really know anything about them, I'd suggest you go ahead and take a look at those first, because this discussion is going to assume that you have at least a little bit of knowledge of working with grammars. But once you do, we'll go ahead and talk about what semantic interpretation is, why you'd use it, and the differences between putting semantic interpretation in grammars versus within an application. So what is semantic interpretation? Well, it's kind of a subtle distinction, but it's one that's really important, and also one that's often misunderstood by developers who are new to working with speech recognition. Basically, it's the process of determining what a user said versus what they meant, and what they meant is the semantic interpretation. Let's say you have a call router. A customer calls in and asks to talk to technical service. Another customer calls in and asks to talk to technical support. And a third just says support. Well, all three callers meant exactly the same thing. They all wanted technical support, but they used three different phrases to get across that same meaning. And you know, as humans, we're pretty good at picking up on that. We can do semantic interpretation very well. Computers, you know, they require more explicit um, input. So semantic interpretation will let you go ahead and take all three of those utterances and return a single result that can be predictable and useful by computer code. So let's take a look at a more in-depth example here. And we'll do another call router. Let's say we have this line in our SRGS grammar. And this basically just says that callers can call up and ask to talk to a guy named Robert Smith by saying Robert Smith, Bob Smith, or just Robert or Bob without a last name. So that's a couple different ways to ask for the same guy. Well, you don't want to have to, from in your application, account for all these different ways. It becomes pretty tricky. Well, within a grammar, if you put semantic interpretation tags inside the grammar, you can actually have all those different utterances return Robert Smith. Or you could even just have all those different utterances return, say, an extension. So in your application, you could just say, well, if I get back this extension, transfer them to this. Or if I get back Robert Smith, transfer them to Robert Smith. This makes it a lot easier for you because you don't have to count for all these again within your application and users can say a wide range of responses. Another way you can use semantic interpretation is to control and format the kind of output from our speech engine to your application. A uh, second example would be, say, you have a prompt that asks a caller for a PIN, a series of digits. So the caller says, one, two, three, four. Well, our engine understands words and not really numbers exactly. We see numbers as being words, not digits. So we'll return to you one, the word, the word two, the word three, and the word four. Well, you could probably perform some transformations within your application to say if you saw one, replace it with a digit. But with semantic interpretation, you can just go ahead and turn those words into numbers before it even reaches your application, which is quite handy, of course, because your application is going to want to just work with digits. Likewise, if you have a longer number, say, caller says 1,094, and what you want back is not the word 1, the word 1,000, the word 90, the word 4. What you want back is 1,094. You can do that also with semantic interpretation. So hopefully you're starting to get an idea of why semantic interpretation is so important and why it has to be done. You pretty much need to always do it. But one thing new developers are often are unsure about is, well, why put this in a grammar when I could put it in my application? And technically you could, within an application, just account for all the different utterances and phrases your callers are likely to say, and then go ahead and translate them in, into some sort of um, standard output. But if you start thinking about this, what are you doing here? you're actually recreating the grammar because the grammar already contains all the words and phrases you expect callers to say and that you want recognized. So if you put the grammar into your application code, this creates some issues. I mean, first of all, it's just not elegant, right? You want to keep this kind of data separate from your actual logical application code. And the other big problem is it's hard to keep them in sync. You're going to be making changes to your grammars as you tune your application. You're going to add entries, change entries, that kind of thing. And if you have to update it in two places, that makes it pretty difficult to keep things in sync. And so if you have an utterance in your grammar that is not having proper interpretation done in your code because you forgot to update it there, you, know, you get these all weird results. And you want to just stay away from that if at all possible. 
So by using semantic interpretation within a grammar, you can get nice, clean, predictable output to your application and just have things be much smoother. And there's another kind of special case that's interesting, and that's working with DTMF, also known as uh, dual tone multi-frequency, sometimes called touch tone. It's the sound that telephone keys make when you press them. Well, our speech engine doesn't handle DTMF tones by itself. Your telephony platform has to decode those tones. But once your telephony platform has done that, you can pass the decoded results, the re results of what numbers were pressed, to our engine. And our engine can actually run them through a grammar and perform semantic interpretation on them. This way you can have, you know, if you have a prompt where a user can press or say a number, well, you can go ahead and just have the same semantic interpretation return regardless of whether they said one or they pressed one, which is great because now in your application you don't have to go, well, if I see DTMF input, execute this code, and if I see speech return, execute this code. You just check the semantic interpretation from the engine and you move on your way, which is really handy. So that pretty much covers this introduction to semantic interpretation. In the next video, we're going to really roll up our sleeves and get into the nitty gritty about semantic interpretation for speech recognition. That's the W3 spec uh, standard that you can use to actually put these semantic interpretation tags within your grammar. And so we'll cover the syntax, introduce you to working with them, and give you some tips for how best to use them in semantic interpretation part two.